Oh, I, you can run today and live tomorrow, but dying in your beds many years from now, would you be willing to give every day from this till that for one chance, just one chance, to come back here and tell your enemies that they may take your lives, but they may never take your freedom! All right, and so this is Jordan Peterson decision against his right to free speech canada does have censored censored speech it is not like the u.s where they have freedom of speech so we got three videos we're going to run through each one briefly talking about the decisions and the ramifications represent references his very large following on social media and his best-selling books and the court found that the code of ethics of psychologists explicitly addresses public statements and prohibits degrading and demeaning comments by members when they are making public statements. And the court also held that the argument that Dr. Peterson made that he's speaking in his uh, personal capacity, uh, not as a clinical psychologist, the court found that Dr. Peterson's own conduct and statements undermines that position. The court found that Dr. Peterson describes himself on Twitter and on um, on Rogan and on YouTube as a clinical psychologist, that he sees himself as functioning as a clinical psychologist in the broader public space, even though he no longer sees clients uh, in a clinical practice. And the, the court found that Dr. Peterson claims he's helping millions of people, as he puts it, and that he is still practicing psychology in a more- Yeah, he's, he's trained, he understands the field, and he has an, an opinion that doesn't align with with what the Canadian government wants. So he's being fined $25,000 and being told that he doesn't have the right to express his opinion. It's unprofessional. So, so again, just like yelling racism when someone has a good point that doesn't align with your view and you don't have a counterpoint, you just say, you're a racist, you're a bigot, you're this, you're that, you're a bad person. And this is the Canadian government using that same technique, just saying, well, yes, you, you are technically as educated as we are, but we have formed the consensus that your speech is un, unwelcome and, and is deserving of a $25,000 monetary penalty um, because you said the wrong thing and we don't like it. Diffuse and broad manner. In short, the court wrote that while Dr. Peterson's lawyers may argue that his comments are off duty and outside of the role, his role as a psychologist, Dr. Peterson himself doesn't say, see it this way. The court knows what, how Dr. Peterson views himself, I guess. He is fighting for freedom and speech in Canada and by extension, the rest of the world that has decent speech laws and isn't completely oppressive and corrupt. As Canada falls, so do we all. Let's move on to the next one. You get the, you get the point. Things are not going well. You're not allowed to talk. Not an American problem. It's a problem across the first world. In Europe, uh, they're talking about Germany's talking about banning political parties that have a, a right-leaning bent, not not competing with them, debating them, and and ousting them because their logic is is sound and excellent for the future of the country. Um, the reason that there is a rise of a counterparty is because their policies are so shitty and pissing off the population to the point that they're willing to take anything except for the status quo. And um, this is what I'm saying we should do in America and across the first world. Just go in and whoever's sitting in that seat right now, vote them out, oust all of them. And we'll start over. We'll deal with the new problems when they come. But right now you've got a web of corruption that is possibly global. And the more of those people that we can remove from power, the sooner that we can reclaim our freedoms of speech our financial freedoms, the right to pursue liberty, happiness, and all that good crap. There's not many options. I mean, if we don't address this now, it's going to get much, much worse, and you're not going to have the, the, the easy options of just going and voting. That's all you need to do. Vote, vote a leader in that you think you want, and then vote everybody else out so that leader can help realign policy um, with freedoms and American ideals and get rid of all this backdoor corruption and greed and money and corporate um, interests that are just basically 
they're just paying the government to be their mouthpiece and set their their policies in alignment with corporate corporate agendas administrative bodies have regarding the context in which the decisions are made and the consequences for the individual and in the event the icrax reasons are transparent intelligible just file and reasonable the panel prepared a 10-page single space decision it considered a mandate and engaged in a clear change of analysis that involved reviewing a factual background it concerns with the language used by dr peterson and his response to the panels it considered the advice again we're calling it advice which we 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 we're calling advice despite the fact it's clearly a $25,000 judgment against him. And consider the advice provided to Dr. Peterson in 2020, the ICRAC suggestion that Dr. Peterson agreed to undertake the program of coaching, his refusal to do so, which if it's a suggestion, why would it matter? And ICRAC's reasons for rejecting Dr. Peterson's own coaching proposal. The panel considered the regular, the professional regulatory context, the governing rules, the impact of the charter, Dr. Peterson's unwillingness to acknowledge the concerns. Following transparency and coherent decision, the panel concluded reasonably that Dr. Pierce's behavior raised a moderate risk of harm to the public, which the panel had articulated in its decision and concluded it was very concerned with the recurrence of risk in this case was high, and therefore concluded the change of analysis by deciding it would be appropriate to the public interest by requiring Dr. Pearson to complete a SCRP to address his professionalism in the public statement. The application for judicial review was therefore denied. The applicant, Jordan Pearson, shall pay the college costs of the amount of $25,000. Yep. And apparently a three to zero decision. So fun and exciting. So that is all that. And that was released today. So John Porson has to pay $25,000, which he will absolutely not pay because he's already said he won't. Yep. We aren't that far, far behind Canada. Those in the West are watching the fall in real time. In this video, we learned that Canada is an evil place where no one should ever be. I hope I hope you're paying attention. I'm, I listen, I haven't posted to social media for years. I started this channel two months ago because of this type of stuff. This is not something that I really want to do. This is something where the rest of my life was becoming so frustrating. Watching this in my face all the time, on my phone, on TV, hearing it from different places. There comes a point where it, it's just a breaking point and and you can stay silent and and stay complicit and go along with it if you want but i'm not going to be looking back in history and saying oh man that was really great evil that i recognized at a certain point in time and i chose to do nothing i sat down with the rest of everyone else and i was scared because that's what they've done they've instilled fear to prevent you from speaking and a lot of people are going along with that not me not on my watch I am willing to put everything on the line, including my own privacy, my free time, to push back against this and make sure that freedom does not die with a whimper in my lifetime. It's pathetic that, that we even have to have this discussion. And, and this is just one. This is just one example of things that are, that are being taken um, in one country. It's, it's difficult to ignore because it's starting to, to gain momentum. And the, the only way that momentum is stopped is for a large force of opposition to counteract this force. It's conservation of momentum. Yes, and, and yeah. that's where we're at with this. Uh, are you going to appeal this decision? Yes. Oh, yeah, I'll fight it right to the Supreme Court. Yeah, yeah, this is an all-out, this is all-out battle for me. Okay. I'm going to bring absolutely every single resource I have to bear on fighting this. I will make every single. I'm your resource, Jordan. Give me, give me whatever you want to put out there, and I will repost it. We will give you, and I mean, I'm nobody, but I'm still, I'm not going to let that dissuade me. My little voice will be raised in unison with the rest of the little voices out there, and together we become one giant voice one unstoppable voice you can't you can silence big creators you know ban their channel censor their videos try doing that to the masses you know people people starting small channels everybody everybody pushing back against this don't underestimate your own power and don't let yourself be defeated before you even try this is a real battle for freedom and and if you care about the future and 
and humanity, your fellow human beings on this planet, and you want them to have the best life possible, then I suggest that you rise up and help us push back against tyranny. Because th this is tyranny. I, I don't care if it's left or right. Being deprived of your right to be part of the discussion, even if your views are unpopular, sometimes that's how progress is made, is through unpopular views. The church at one point was trying to silence everyone because they didn't want any progress. And now you've got progressives who are doing the same thing in the name of progress, silencing any sort of debate and discussion and just forcing, foisting their agenda on you with, with no consideration for your views or beliefs. You're supposed to lay down and accept and obey. And there's a lot of different things that are training us to do this. Society is training that if you stick your head up, you're going to get pounded back down and you're going to lose your job and your family's going to get harassed and, you're, and your life's going to become living hell, even if it's legal to speak how you how you believe and um, the, the, the the government is uh, is clearly demonstrating that their agenda is not to support your rights but rather to do whatever it takes to get more corporate money so they get elected again because they need to run all these commercials to brainwash you into voting for them when they really are anti-american and anti um, freedom bit of it public and so I've kept my sword sheathed so far, but I know that this ruling will embolden the college and that's fine. I've been as civilized as I could possibly be so far in this dispute. And so the gloves are off as far as I'm concerned. So I'll fight it indefinitely. Okay, so We're already set up to do it. You, you know, we, we talked earlier about the fact that you, you, you didn't think the uh, uh, plus size model for Sports Illustrated was beautiful. You told somebody who was complaining that there's too many people in the world. I thought it was a very pithy uh, response. This is what I mean. Are, are we like group cognitive dissonance seems to be a thing because traditionally we could all agree on what what was beauty, what was sexually attractive. Um, so there's conventional descriptions of this. Certain people really do like larger people, women who like larger men. Um, men who like larger women, people have sexual preferences, and that's fine. But to say that the human ideal has changed from being physically fit, um, capable of jumping and running, uh, lifting weights, being functional, you know, this has conventionally been beautiful. A strong man, a strong woman, well-built, no health problems. People find this to be sexually attractive because it's most likely an excellent... Uh, person that you can produce children who will have the aptitude and and things qualities needed for survival in a chaotic and dangerous world so to change that ideal into someone who is fat I mean I, I personally don't care cosmetically fat or not but I would not have a relationship with someone who's obese because I like to move my body we are not gonna have things in common so the beauty is going to be diminished if it's someone that I'm considering as a partner simply because I know that they're not interested in self-improvement. They're not interested in maintaining their body in case it's needed. Um, they see no value. You know, like you have a car, you maintain it. Because um, it's, the, so the body is the vehicle for the mind. Would you not do oil changes to your car and expect it to be reliable? Would, would you not lift a little bit of weight and exercise a little bit to keep your body in the best shape? Would you not feed it um, good, solid, quality foods that are not going to poison you and and uh, rot your teeth or, or diminish your overall health? Uh, are you going to put chemicals inside of it that are bad for you? Like, I just don't understand the argument as to why we should lower our standards of what is peak human form when scientifically we know what it is. When someone is active and strong and can lift more than anyone else and can run farther than anyone else, they look a certain way. And we find that beautiful. And no amount of cognitive di dissonance is going to change the fact that people like functionality. Bonds, you said you're free to leave any time. Um, you know, comments about Justin Trudeau, about uh, Katie Telford, about Ottawa City Councilor dog. Catherine McKenney. Those are all very political. Some will yeah. say, yes, but you're uh, speaking out on trans issues is that goes too far. That goes against what the college says or allows. 
Yeah, I've what got to say to those people. Oh, oh, I've got some things to say about that. All right. The first bloody thing I'll say is that the sterilization of minors is forced sterilization. You cannot obtain valid informed consent from minors for such surgery. That's forced sterilization. By UN definition, that's a crime against humanity. So, and I. But this is why they're trying to change the laws so to legalize it so that that way not only can they consent to sterilization but also potentially engagements with adults and you can eliminate that whole problematic thing of like oh well it's technically illegal to you know do things that adults should not be doing with children i i can't you got to be careful what you say because i don't want videos to be taken down uh i hate to self-censor but better to have most of the message come out, then just have the whole video go down. So I apologize for some of the ways that I talk sometimes. I know five European countries have already backtracked on the gender affirming surgery front. And the US is gonna follow suit relatively quickly because of all the lawsuits. And, and think... the, UK, the UK has walked away from their number one clinic on this because of problems. Tavistock. Yes, to, to, yeah, because of problems to, yeah. That's, to hey, say that's putting it mildly. Not, that is for sure it's putting it mildly in five years there won't be a single person who ever who will admit that they were ever in favor of this absolute butchery i believe I'm that. perfectly happy with my I tweet that. about elliot page it's going to age extremely well and the fact that i'm on the public record as opposing this sadistic lying butchery and the criminal silence of therapists in this regard i am 100 percent happy about and if the college wants to be public about their support for the sterilization and butchery of minors, you let them go right ahead. We'll see how that plays out. Okay, let, let me ask you this quickly. If somebody came to you in a clinical practice and said they had gender dysmorphia, they thought they were yeah. transsexual, yeah. would you throw them out of your office, tell them you're crazy? Or, no. or, or, or would you go through a, a process with them, a process oh, that I you have, now say isn't allowed under the current rules. Oh, I had lots of people in my clinical practice who had problems of that sort. I mean, everybody who comes into clinical session who's reasonably troubled has an identity problem. And what you do as a counselor is you listen. You listen to what the person has to say about why they're unhappy, about... Modern psychology just wants to get the hatchet out. I mean, th this is this is technically correct according to you know conventional psychological practices is you take a, a belief you take reality and you try to reconcile the two and assist the person with um, gaining the coping skills and the understandings of you know what is good for them what is bad for them i mean there's people that amputate limbs because they're trans-abled or something like that. Uh, I mean, sh should is it better to let someone who mentally feels that they shouldn't have legs put themselves in a wheelchair and drive nails through their bones because no one will amputate their legs, so they hack their legs off and drive nails through the bones to break them. This is a real person who did this. and And then now they're sitting in a wheelchair telling everybody about it. Or is it better to, to help them come to terms with their legs and remain with the ability to walk around and be a functioning member of society? I mean, under play rules, which is what we're in now, we can do whatever we want. But under survival rules, like if we did need to harvest potatoes this winter, uh, this this fall, to, to have food over the winter or something like that, any, anything survival where there's real consequences, now, now the game stops being fun and and now people probably stop supporting oh well john wants to cut his legs off but we need everybody all hands on deck to harvest so let's try to talk him out of that and and ask him and tell him how helpful it would be to the fabric of society if he could at least attempt to try and reconcile with the fact that he has legs and walk around and help us gather food because he's going to be eating too the source of their misery about the actual expression of the misery, about what they think's wrong, about what they think might constitute an improvement. You do mutual experimentation to try to figure out what the uh, steps forward are. But you should also know as a therapist, and every therapist who isn't lying, who's credible and competent knows this, that 
with regards to so-called gender dysphoria, first of all, the evidence that it's a psychological epidemic is overwhelming. Everyone knows that. And second, the clinical data that was derived before this became politicized indicated that the vast majority of minors who are so-called body dysmorphic, gender dysmorphic. Well, you're making it really easy to be gender dysmorphic because you're you're de you're destroying the traditional definitions. So now a man can be anything and a woman can be anything. So it used to be like, oh, these are the two genders. This is what I can identify most with. But you're you're hitting it from both ends where you're confusing the underlying understandings of what that is. And then you're also prompting minors to think that questioning this is part of the adolescence experience of coming of age and growing up is deciding what gender that I'm going to be, not just what job I want to do and who do I want to date, but also what what modifications am I going to do to my body? Um, do I want to stay the way I am or do I want to become a transformer? And so the the issue is ballooning simply because we are putting the focus on it, just like racism. You know, I mean... It, I think in the, the early 2000s when Dave Chappelle was on TV and people were having a discussion about this, there's an understanding that it is human nature to be tribal and, and in prisons people still self-segregate. So this is like a human behavior that we can work on, but in order to work on it, we need to discuss it. We can't make the subject so sensitive that if anyone says a few words, everybody gets offended and starts personally attacking each other and then the conversation stops, which is where we're at right now. We've created an environment where if we try to have intelligent adult conversations, people get so upset and worked up that it just devolves into chaos and, and no one can even discuss. So we will never again be able to agree. Perfect. Are gay and having a hard time coming to terms with that and who accept their bodily status by the age of 18. So. It's incumbent upon you as a therapist to take the route of minimal harm. And that's absolutely 100% true on the surgical side. Yeah. So the first thing you do is you approach it with the rule of thumb, which is don't do anything drastic, right? You have a confused adolescent. It's going to take a year of listening before they even tell you the whole story, before you can find out what's going on. Your job as a therapist is never to affirm someone's identity. Your job as a therapist is to explore the identity with the person so that they can come to a fuller realization of what that identity does and should. And the craziest part about what's going on in the LGBTQ plus community is that I'm hearing that cisgender homosexual people, lesbians and gay men are claiming that the trans group is being homophobic against them because in a lot of cases they believe that a gay man should actually become a trans woman instead of being a gay man who's attracted to men what they actually should be is a is a trans woman who's attracted to men and the same concept for for cisgender lesbians is you know oh you're uh you know you actually want to be a man you're just you're not understanding yourself like like they understand people better than people understand themselves it's um it's really just it's sad and it's confusing and and it's nonsense uh i think everybody should be allowed to do whatever they want and i think people um including the government should should stop shoving it down other people's throats just do what you want to do let's let's let everybody be free let's give everybody the right to pursue life liberty and happiness inside america and other first world countries and let's try to make decisions that give us the most freedom and rights to do this instead of diminishing rights to install totalitarian dicta dictator style rules that enforce these as a mandate and and basically make you say hey you you have to be part of this trans thing you got to choose you know something to do with this but you can't just be over here on the sidelines being you know saying i don't want anything to do with it you, you're a bigot you need to be an ally, and that means becoming involved and doing the group behavior with us. Would constitute. You can't impose that. And so, uh, and I would remain, as a therapist, I always remain neutral in that regard, not because I was being moral politically, but because 
if you have any sense, if you're counseling someone deeply, you have to understand that you cannot interfere with their destiny. It's not your right. You have to explore with okay. them. Yeah. But so now, now you say the college forces you. Oh, there's no doubt. A decision about it. and affirm early, right? Oh, absolutely. There's it is illegal not to affirm. And that is absolutely it's the death of therapy, as far as I'm concerned. Because look, man, you can't affirm someone who's anorexic. You know, they say, Well, I think I'm fat. I very, feel I'm fat. Very good point. You know, I'm a thin person trapped in a fat person's body, let's say. Well, you know, you're starving to death. I can't affirm that. We have to explore it and see what's going on. There's no affirmation of identity in therapy. That is That runs completely contrary to the entire ethos of the therapeutic practice. Every psychoanalyst knows that. Humanistic psychologists, behaviorists, cognitive therapists, everyone knows that. Everyone who isn't, who's a therapist, who isn't decrying this legislation is remaining, is is engaging in a quasi-criminal silence that's devastating to the profession. So I have no shame whatsoever about my opposition to this absolutely insane trans activism propaganda, murderous and criminal. So, and if the college wants to go on record for opposing that, no problem. You have one uh, big fight ahead of you, Dr. Peterson. I know you're very busy right now. Thanks for taking the time today and keep us up to date on how the uh, the fight goes in the courts. Yeah, well, thank you for your question, sir. And and I appreciate your interest in your, and your uh, what would you call it, pointed interrogation. Yeah, good to talk to you. Talk again soon. Man, we'll see how this unfolds. He's going to take it to the Supreme Court. But um, this is enforced speech. This is enforced compliance. And it's frankly a scary place to be headed. So anyway, you guys take care. Uh, I'll see you again soon.